um, defining and divisive theme as uh, some people have been taking a knee during the national anthem. I don't think that they mean that the way that it's perceived by many people. I, I have very strong feelings about our nation. I'm, I'm very patriotic. I, I think it's incredibly important that we honor our flag and that we honor America. Amen. And it has, it has really hurt the NFL. Um, I mean, it, it has hit them in the, in the bread basket, so to speak, uh, right in the financial pocketbook. And so it's, it's a pretty big deal. But, but way, way before the days of Colin Kaepernick or any of that, uh, there's a guy named Tim Tebow who was also very controversial. And he was controversial because he would wear John 316 under his eyeshadow, uh, not eyeshadow, well, they would, his sun shield. Yeah, that, that's really football strong there, eyeshadow. Man, I'm having a banner day today. I'm, I'm coming up with all kinds of them. And uh, one of the things that he did one time when he scored a touchdown, he took a knee and he just gave thanks to God. And man, I mean, what an outcry, uh, you know. How dare you bring religion into to the sports world? Um, but I would say that that's taken a knee for the right reason. Amen. And, and so I wanted to share with you, um, you, those of you that may not know it, I... I had an incredibly illustrious football career that lasted the entirety of the seventh grade football season. And I had blazing lightning speed in my mind, and I could catch any ball that was thrown to me. And that really is true. I could catch a football like crazy, but I was just slow as the dickens, and so I didn't have a really good chance. Um, so I thought, man, I'm going to be a wide receiver. But the coach looked at me, and he sees my seventh grade body, five foot seven, 98 pounds, soaking wet. And he said, I've got the place for you. He put me right on the defensive line. Defensive end. Me. You know, the toothpick, like the, the guy, when I had my helmet on and I turned sideways, people would say, he looks like a zipper. <laughs> I, but I, man, I worked hard at it. I'll never forget one day in practice, I, I got down to the three-point stance, and man, I came off that block, and man, I creamed the quarterback, and put him on the ground, I threw my fist, yeah! And the coach said, Howard! Didn't you hear me blow the whistle, did? <laughs> no, sir, I didn't. <laughs> and then there was the infamous game when... Our team, we were 0, 8, and 1. Zero wins, eight losses, one tie. The only time we had a tie, I never understood, last game of the season, for some reason the coach let his Doberman pincer loose on the football field, and they called the game. <laughs> and we ended up in a tie. But there was that game when I was in position, three-point stance. And the other team, they were drumming on us pretty hard. Some would say they had handed our helmets to us. And here I am ready, and they got this one kid, now me, 5'7", I go about 98, 99 on a good day. But the kid that we, we turned him, his nickname was Bowling Ball. He was as wide as he was tall, and he just rolled over people. I thought... This guy has to weigh at least 200 pounds. It's the seventh grade. And so we had called the stunt. This means I'm, I'm defensive end. My teammate is going to jive this way. I'm going to fake, and I'm going to go around him, and I'm going to get into the backfield. And so we run the stunt, and it just opens up beautifully, and everything is just right in front of me. It's just me and bowling ball. And he's coming right at me. And man, I get ready, I'm gonna wrap him up with a textbook tackle. Wham! I hit bowling ball, and all of a sudden, I couldn't see. I thought, my Lord, I'm blind. What has happened? And then I heard my coach yelling, Howard! 
And I try to get my bearings and I can't see except for a little bit in the middle there. And then I realized I'm looking out my ear hole. <laughs> and I turned around and bowling ball was going 80 yards for a touchdown. That was the end of my illustrious career in football. But I've had lots of coaches through the years. Basketball, baseball, football, you name it. Every sport, every practice, it didn't matter what the occasion was. There was always a time where the coach says, Hey guys, hey guys, bring it in, bring it in, bring it in. Take a knee. You take a knee to receive instruction. You take a knee to jive together as a team. And you take a knee to be able to jail and, and to be able to understand your teammates and, and, and get some strategy and some game plan. Take a knee. I want to share with you seven different Bible characters who took a knee and they did it the right way. And the first one is a guy named David. Psalm 95 verse 6. Come let us bow down and worship. Let us kneel before the Lord our maker for he is our God. And we are the people of his pasture, the flock under his care. David tells us, when you worship the Lord, take a knee. Now I don't think, please don't think that when I say that, I'm saying every single time you have the worship time in the service, that means to get on your knees. That's not what I'm saying. That's not, not what I'm implying. But what I am saying is that to take a knee in a, a picture of surrender and submission, to take a knee... Um, I have always had the practice, as long as I can remember, of being in the Word and being in prayer each day. And by the way, every one of us is supposed to do that. All of us. It's not just the pastors or the board members or the, the leaders. or the, All of us are in we're, our goal. We intend to read the Word each day and to pray. That's, that's when we take a knee and we hear from the Lord. And um, so when you worship the Lord, take a knee. Now, I, at some point along the journey, I realized that um, sometimes I pray better when I'm just on my face before God. Sometimes I pray better when I'm sitting with a cup of coffee and the Bible opened up before me. Amen. Sometimes I pray better when I'm driving down the road and there's just I'm able to push all the stuff out. And then I'm just saying there's different ways, there's different approaches, but make your prayer appointment with God your most important appointment of the day and take a knee with Him each and every day. The second one is Solomon. Solomon says, when you have a special occasion, take a knee. Do you remember this story from 2 Chronicles chapter 6? It was the dedication of the temple. Solomon had, had overseen it and and uh, his father David supplied everything for it. David wanted to do it, but God said to David, you're not the one to do it. You're a man of war. You've shed blood in, in warfare. I want Solomon to be the one to build the temple. And he dedicates the temple. And it says he stood on the platform and then knelt down before the whole assembly of Israel and spread out his hands toward heaven. Why did he do that? Well, what follows is this amazing prayer of dedication. He dedicates the temple. It is a special occasion. For the ones of you that are at our house tonight, um, somehow when we moved into our new home on March 2nd, we had intended to dedicate it to the Lord. And just recently I was thinking, we didn't do that. And I know the reasons why, because this happened and that happened and the other thing. But tonight, the people that are there um, just enjoying the Super Bowl, we're going to take a moment at some point in the evening, we're going to dedicate our home to the Lord. Amen. When when you have a special occasion, take a knee. And then there is a, a third one that I want to share with you, and it's Elijah. And he said, and what I would say is, when you're experiencing victories, take a knee. If you remember this story from 1 Kings 18, uh, look at the wording of it. Ahab went off to eat and drink. Ahab was the king. And, but Elijah climbed to the top of Carmel bent down to the ground and put his face between his knees. So, here's an amazing thing that's happened. Elijah has just defeated the 450 prophets of Baal up on top of the mountain. And he, he's called down fire from heaven, sends them running. 
But then just a short while later, we see him hiding out in a cave saying, God, I, I don't want to minister anymore. Strumming the old guitar, singing the blues. He's just, I'm done. There's nobody on my team. Nobody cares about me. Nobody helps me do anything. Any of you ever like Elijah? Just be honest. And it's me. It's only me. It's kind of like those interviews in all the sports games. Like uh, when they say, how did it feel to win the game? And they, they always say, the whole world was against us. Nobody thought we could do it. But we pulled it off. Well, sometimes you can tend to get that way. But Elijah had a great victory, and he took a knee, and then the next chapter, he's whining and crying. I think it's important, though, when you have a victory in your life, to stop and say, thank you, God. You're the reason I have this victory. Uh, when you experience victories, then take a knee. I, um, speaking of victories, we're going to have another sports-themed service uh, later on in the month of March. Um, actually, wow, that's coming up fast. March Madness next month, that's right. But it's, it's going to be different. So next week when you come to church, you'll have a chance if you want to order your t-shirt. Um, I don't have the price yet, but my vision is to drape a white t-shirt over every chair, just like they do at the sports arenas. And it's going to be a total whiteout. On March Madness weekend, I'm going to be preaching from Isaiah 118, wash me and you shall be whiter than snow. And we're going to invite our friends and we're going to have a whiteout on March Madness weekend. So I hope you'll come help us celebrate the victory. Now, the fourth person that I want you to notice is Ezra. When you're ashamed of sin, take a knee. Then at the evening sacrifice, I rose from my self-abasement with my tunic and cloak torn, and I fell on my knees with my hands spread out to the Lord my God. Ezra, quite an amazing character. You see, what he's doing is what a lot of the Old Testament prophets and scribes and leaders did. Daniel did this as well. Not only is he praying for the people of Israel and saying, Oh God, forgive their sins. Those no good, rotten scoundrels, they are sinful. Forgive them. Emphasis on third person out there. Them. No, no, no. He doesn't do that. His cry is, forgive us. Wash us. Here's a respected leader saying, you know what, Lord? We all need forgiveness. And we just call out our sins to you. We pray that you forgive us and wash us. So when you're ashamed of sin, take a knee. And then the fifth one that I'd like you to see is Daniel. Daniel chapter 6, verse 10. When, when you're threatened, when you are threatened, take a knee. Now, when Daniel learned that the decree had been published, he went home to his upstairs room with his windows open toward Jerusalem three times a day. He got down on his knees and prayed, giving thanks to God, just as he had done before. Some translations say, just as he had been doing. He didn't change one thing about his practice. What is the occasion? The occasion is that the Babylonian emperor has just said, Daniel, Either you worship me and no one else are... And Daniel goes home, opens up the windows, points to Jerusalem in good Jewish fashion, and he continues to bow his knee. When you're threatened, bow your knee. There is no more appropriate time when life is throwing everything at you that it can muster. Just bow your knee and say, God, I am trusting in you. And then the next one is Peter. When you need a miracle, take a knee. Anybody need a miracle today? Peter sent them all out of the room and then he got down on his knees and he prayed. Turning toward the dead woman, he said, Tabitha, get up. Talitha Kalum, girl, rise, get up. She opened her eyes, and seeing Peter, she sat up. A lot of times, we face a great need, and instead of going to God, 
We duck our heads, we put our tail between our legs like a whipped puppy, and we run scared. But this morning when we were worshiping, we decreed God's victory over our lives, over our city. Yes. When, when you've been threatened, when you need a miracle, bow your knee. Amen. And then there's one more. And it is Paul. When in sorrow, take a knee. When Paul finished speaking, he knelt down with all of them and prayed. Now, Acts chapter 20 is a sad occasion because Paul tells them, I'm about to get on that boat and go to Rome, and I know I'm never going to see any of your faces again. He's speaking to the elders of the church in Ephesus. He says, this is the last time, guys. He may have said, I'll see you in heaven. It's a sad occasion. But they bowed together. They prayed together. They trusted God together. If you ever face sorrow, and you do, and you have, and you will, bow your knee. Amen. Even in life's most difficult moments, when, when you don't even understand, you don't even know how or why, you try to make sense of it. But God might be using that moment to see where your loyalty lies. When you face sorrow, bow your knee to Him and say, God, I don't understand, but I trust You and my eyes are on You and I am not going to, to turn away. So this morning we saw some of the kids give us a touchdown celebration. I, I, you know what? I wish that all of us adults would be freed up like our kiddos. Man, they are exciting. I mean, I probably, if I tried to do what Jason was doing, I would probably have to be taken to the hospital afterwards, okay? But man, that was exciting. So today, I want to close with, with one major point. Of all these seven different people who bowed the knee, here's the, here is your touchdown celebration. And this is it, the last frame. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him that name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Every person that you see cutting you off in traffic, <clears throat> they're going to... They're going to bow their knee. They're going to speak with their tongue that Jesus is the Lord. Yes. <laughs> Every co-worker that is cruel and mean and resentful and bitter, they're going to bow their knee. Amen. They're going to speak with their mouth that Jesus is the Lord. Every, every mean-spirited neighbor that just keeps taunting you and annoying you and agonizing you over things that shouldn't really matter. You want to just say, just let it go. They will bow their knee. Their tongue will confess. Do you know what? We don't get upset when sinners act like sinners. You know, Jesus never got upset about sinners acting like sinners. He just said they're just doing what they're supposed to do. That's how sinners are. And, and instead, his approach was, I didn't come for the healthy, I came for those who were sick. Yes, and so the great physician says, I want to mingle, I want to interact. Why? Because he wants to take as many people with him to heaven as possible. And now, I, I don't mean to imply that Christians are perfect. That Christians never get mad in traffic. That Christians never have you know, disputes with a co-worker, that Christians never have an, a neighbor that annoys them. I mean, that's not what I'm saying. My point is that every person on this planet, everyone, will speak that Jesus is Lord. Amen. They will bow their knee. They will take a knee. Every one of them. He is Lord. Amen. The only question is, will it be now a free choice or will it be later a forced bow? 
a forced declaration. You were right all along. I was wrong. See, we're all going to we're all going to speak that Jesus is Lord. We're all going to bow our knee. And so this morning, I want to give the opportunity for everyone in this room to invite Jesus into your heart. Do you know? Um, I was talking with one of our folks. Do you know we had someone accept Jesus as Lord and Savior this morning, even before the service started? Amen. To to recommit to walking in a fresh and new, awesome way with Jesus. That's wonderful. Yes, amen. Isn't that awesome? Yes. If if you have any doubts at all, let me lead you in a prayer. You don't have to leave with doubt. You can have the assurance of God that you are saved. And so these aren't magic words. It's not something that I have written down and is scripted. But it's just me talking from my heart to the Lord the way you will. And by the way, some people say, well, I don't know how to pray. Well, you know, when you pray, don't become somebody different than you are. Just be who you are. God knows you. He likes you just the way you are. So just talk to him like you like he was your best friend because he is. Amen. So if you want to invite Jesus into your heart, then then pray something like these words that I'm praying. And, and you can pray along with me in your heart right now. If you really believe this, then you'll be saved. You'll be Amen. saved today. Dear Lord Jesus, forgive my sins. I've sure made a mess of things. Help me because I really do love you. I, I do love you, God, and I want to serve you. So, I, I acknowledge right now, not later, right now I acknowledge with my lips and my knee I bow before you. I'm saying that I believe you died for my sins and rose from the dead. I believe that about you. I believe that you are coming back for your church someday. I want to be ready. I believe according to Romans 3.23, everybody has sinned fallen short of the glory of God. I believe, according to Romans 6, 23, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. I believe that according to Romans 10, 9 and 10, if I believe in my heart and if I confess with my mouth that God has raised Jesus from the dead, I will be saved. So I'm praying that way, Lord. I'm just coming to you as a sinner. I'm asking you to forgive me and let me be saved, just like you have let millions, millions have come to you. I'm coming today. I'm coming and giving my heart and my life to you. I don't know everything about what that means from this moment forward, but I am purposing that I'm going to be faithful in your house to church, and I'm going to be faithful to read the Bible. If I don't understand things, and I won't, um, I'm going to ask people for assistance. I'm going to get involved in classes that the church offers so I can learn more about Jesus. I'm going to pray every day, just like I'm doing right now. It's going to be easy. It's not hard. I'm going to talk to you every day. And I'm going to leave space to listen for you to talk back to me. And I believe that if you will just forgive my sins and give me the strength, my life will turn around and I'll never be the 